Hello and welcome back for another Torah Tuesday. Today we're going to track one of the most interesting and commonly used words in the Exodus story and that is the word go. Most people who've heard the Exodus story know that God tells Moses to go to Pharaoh and say let my people go. But long before that happens there are other places where the word go appears in the narrative and anticipates where the story is going to end up in really clever ways. So in Exodus chapter 2, right after Moses' mother puts his papyrus ark in the reeds of the river, like we talked about last week, uh, Moses' sister stations herself nearby so that she can watch over her little brother and see what happens to him. And the next thing that happens is the daughter of Pharaoh comes down to the river and we are nervous. Here is a member of the royal household. What will she do when she finds this child? This could be ugly. So Pharaoh's daughter goes down to the Nile to bathe. She sees the basket and there's a sort of dramatic slowing of the story here where we see step, step by step what she does and we're wondering how she's going to respond. She saw the basket among the reeds. She sent her female slave to get it. She opened it. She saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. So we've already had midwives who defied Pharaoh Moses' mother defied Pharaoh. Now Pharaoh's own daughter is going to defy him. And Miriam approaches, we, we aren't told her name yet at this point, but the sister of the baby approaches Pharaoh's daughter and says, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? This word in Hebrew, it, it, I mean, we see it in English too, go. She's asking for permission to go. May I go? In the same verb form that Moses will later ask Pharaoh, may we go and worship God in the wilderness? And whereas Pharaoh will say no, the daughter of Pharaoh says yes. So she says, may I go? Verse 7. And Pharaoh's daughter says, yes, go. And she's giving a command, go, which is the command we want to hear from Pharaoh, but it takes a long time to get there. So she uses a, a strong imperative, in fact, like a double, going you shall go, like an emphatic go. And then it says the girl went to get the baby's mother. And this is my favorite part. Pharaoh's daughter said to her in English, take this baby and nurse him for me. But it's the word go again. And it's an imperative in Hebrew. It's, it's what's called a hifil imperative, which is like a causative where you cause someone else to do something. So Pharaoh's daughter tells Moses' mother, make him go. In other words, take him. It's this mic drop moment because this is exactly what we're wanting Pharaoh to say, like, go, get out of here. And he doesn't say it until chapter 12. But here we have, again, an anticipation from Pharaoh's own household of the permission that the Israelites need to leave Egypt. So you can continue reading through the story and find the other places uh, that where the word go is used. I'll just point out a couple more examples. In chapter 5, um, the people have come to Pharaoh. The leaders of the Israelites have come and asked for permission to go, and he's not liking it. So in chapter 5, verse 7, you are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw. So it's the phrase we want to hear from him, but not in the right context. Let them go and get more straw, get their own straw. And then he repeats what they've said in verse 8, they're lazy. That's why they're crying out, let us go and sacrifice to God. So again, lots of toying with this phrase, may I go, let us go, you may go, all through the story. Finally, in chapter 10, verse 28, Pharaoh is exasperated with Moses and tells him to go, but he's not saying to leave Egypt. He just wants him to leave the palace. But that probably anticipates what we see in chapter 12, Verse 31, this is right after the death of Pharaoh's firstborn. 
And it says, during the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, up, leave my people, you and the Israelites, go worship Yahweh as you have requested. After months of equivocating and trying to let them just do part of what they've asked for, he's finally like, fine, go. All of you may go, bring your flocks and herds, go worship Yahweh if that's what you need to do. So we finally get the go we've been waiting for. And in the midst of this story in chapter 2 that we were looking at closely is probably one of the most ironic reversals of human history. The mother, who has had to hide her child for fear of his murder by Pharaoh's men, is now paid by Pharaoh's women and protected by the state to nurse him through his infancy. And she's told by the very daughter of Pharaoh, make him go. So again, beautiful literary design to this story. I hope you've been inspired by these connections and go hunting. There's lots more goes in this story. While you're at it, if you haven't noticed it yet, um, on my YouTube channel are several playlists. I've got a collection of other sermons and messages I've given and collections of interviews. If you haven't explored my YouTube channel yet, take a minute to do that and maybe you'll find something interesting. See you next week.